Hi guys, a new paper has just come out and it's all about making graphene with a spray gun and the headline is, is fantastic, simple way of making graphene with a spray gun and of course I've already got about a dozen questions from people saying how do you go about this, do you want to do an example of it, is it suitable for the kitchen, all that kind of thing and I can tell I'm going to get hundreds of questions and they're all going to be the same question so I thought I'd do a quick video uh, to give an answer to that question and then have a look at the video, it'll answer the question for you now, whenever you read a headline that says something wonderful about graphene, and I did warn you this in The Truth Around the Hype of Graphene, have a look at the original paper. Newspapers don't like to go into the nitty-gritty. They like to splash up, isn't this wonderful? When you look at the, little, the, the original paper, and you can find it, it's at the bottom of the article. There'll be a uh, click-through link beginning DOI, and then there'll be a long number. Click on that, it'll take you to the original paper. When you look at the original paper about this spray gun technique, what you realise is... What they're doing is they're taking graphene oxide. Then they pre-treat it with uh, hydrazine. Then they fire it with a spray gun. Then they anneal it at 400 to 500 degrees centigrade to get the graphene back. So they go from graphene oxide to graphene through a whole load of processes of which only one little part is this great buzzword, the spray gun. Now the reason they spray gun at it is the Particles of graphene, um, reduced graphene oxide incidentally, particles of reduced graphene oxide are damaged. When they hit the surface, they impact, bound back out, and that energy of impact repairs the fractures and damage in the reduced graphene oxide. But you still have to get your graphene oxide, and you've got two routes to get it. You can either make it, or you can buy it. If you buy it, it's very, very expensive. If you make it, then you're restricted to the wet chemical methods, uh, Hummers, Brodies, uh, that kind of thing. Or you can stick it in a wretch KM1 with some carbon dioxide and mill it for hours until you get graphene oxide out. But there are quite a few ways of doing it, but you still have to make the graphene oxide. And then you'd have to get hold of yourself, uh, you'd get hold of some hydrazine, remember that's rocket fuel, and use that to reduce your graphene oxide back to go. Then you can spray paint it. Then you've got to anneal it four to five hundred. So it's not an easy process. It's not one that's going to be a wonderful process to reproduce in the kitchen. Plus, you've got to think, what are you wanting? Well, you're wanting graphene. So if you're wanting graphene, why not just use one of the easier processes, like the blender process, for instance, or the mechanical process, or the bromine process, something like that that is doable in the kitchen and will leave you an end result. Okay, so when you get excited about a headline, it's great. So get excited about the headline. But remember, it's a headline that's meant to get you excited. Have a look at the paper, read it, and you'll soon realise that the headline has picked out one little bit of it to highlight on. And the rest of it actually is really quite difficult and not a, um, I would think, a method you would want to approach, given that there are so many other simpler methods when in the end, what you want is graphene. Anyway, I hope this helps answer um, this question, and I hope people will look at this video before asking me again, really, is this method any good? Anyway, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Bye-bye.